Hi there from Bug Eye Guys. This is our baby and it's ready to leave for a new home. It's a fantastic electric bug eye. Zero to 60 in about 10 seconds and a roughly 100 mile range. AC powered, box full of batteries for 166 volts roughly. And then in here we have a 14 volt lithium ion battery. This powers the lights and the wipers and the horn. This powers the motor and the car. This also powers the alternator or inverter that steps the voltage from this high voltage down to the low voltage. And this is a, a water pump that you hear humming when we start it. You'll hear that in a minute. And that moves the water through this little heat exchanger. And this is the controller that manages everything. It thinks it all through for us, the regenerative braking and everything else. These are the fuses for the horn and the fuel gauge. Uh, sorry, no fuel gauge. <laughs> Fooled me. Uh, the, the horn and the blinkers. And these should be fine, but this is pretty much the only user serviceable piece on the whole car. This is a quick disconnect right here. This giant plug. There's another little video that shows this. A quick update about this electric car. Those two are leads right there in the center of your screen are the hot leads and they get connected to this disconnect plug. If you ever need to disconnect the power for service or in an emergency, this is the disconnect that separates the batteries, the high voltage batteries from the rest of the car. So let's go ahead and plug that back in now. We were working on it. We just wanna show you how it plugs back in. Nico, put the e-brake on, please. There it is. Now it's back on, ready to roll. But in today's little session, I just want to give everybody a sense of how we did this, and it will give the new owner a sense of how to use and live with this thing. Here's the horn, by the way. This is a traditional bug eye, well, later sprite sway bar that we use on bug eyes all the time. Lever shocks, just like on bug eyes. And this horn over here is our, our special, I'll play that for you in a minute. That's the special Vroom Vroom Tony the Tiger. Uh, it's actually the sound of a bug eye exhaust, but it sounds an awful lot like something you'd have on your Schwinn handlebars back when we were kids. This is the master cylinder re reservoir. We had to convert it to a single master because obviously no clutch. This is a direct drive system and no gearbox. And this master would be a service item as well. We wanna check this. There's no oil to check, obviously. And so that's pretty much it. This is the charger for the 110 powered charger, which I'll show you in the back when you plug in the 110 line. This little charger feeds this 166 volt battery. So we have master cylinder to check occasionally if you don't see a leak at the wheel cylinders in the back there's very little reason for this to leak or if you didn't have you would you might have fluid on your feet if that was leaking you'd feel it on your toes or you, the floor mat would get slippery and then we have a trickle charger there's a trickle charger inside the car that plugs into this lead and that lead will allow you to sustain a minimum of 12 13 volts in here you need this thing to be charged in order for the main system to energize. So this is actually very important. It's a low voltage line, but this has to be up to speed in order for the computer to get a signal. So that's the bulk of it. Actually, the other thing is the, the bonnet prop. This is a fiberglass nose and it has no telescopic struts like on a steel nose. So we have this bonnet strut right here plugged into this hole. You may want to come towards me a little so you can see where that punches into the, the bonnet, and that's how you hold the bonnet up. And then on the other side, I want to show you while this is up, if you'll come around to this side, we have this safety catch right here. And this is actually very, very important, spring load. And this is hooking on this bale right here, so that if you didn't properly latch the bonnet with these pins, this is just like a steel nose or a stock gas-powered bug eye, frog eye. 
So these pins will lock in here to hold the nose down. But if you forget to lock it, this safety catch stops the nose from flipping up, which with a fiberglass bonnet is actually a liability, a risk. It can't really happen with a steel bonnet because it's so heavy. But this little potato chip, you want to make sure that the safety catch is there so that it won't pop up. So that safety catch you engage right here to open. I'm holding the safety catch. If you come underneath, you'll see. This I'm holding open so that it's free of this bale in order to open the bonnet. It comes down and latches and then we twist the bonnet and check it to make sure it stays up. So that's how that safety catch works. Now, into the car, all the rest of this is very much like a gas power bug, right? So, I'm gonna turn the key on, put the lights on. I see there's no light inside here. This is a GPS uh, Speedo powered right off of this. And this key turns on the power for the car. So here we have RPMs and there's a, a button right here that allows us to scroll through the functions. And one of those says volts and that will tell you the volts. It says 164.1, right? That'll tell you the volts of the main pack. So it's very difficult with these cars because this number will fluctuate wildly. So the best bet is to be on this trip odometer setting, reset it by holding this in and now it's on zero. I know that we've just fully charged this. It actually had 11 miles on it since the last charge. We'll charge it up again tonight, but I'm gonna be looking for you know anywhere between 60 and 100 miles to make sure I've charged, and that's the best bet to do that, is to use the odometer because it's more visible than this gauge. But that's the voltage inside the main pack. The transmission, believe it or not, is just this switch right here. That's reverse, that's neutral, and that's forward. So if I step on the gas now, there's forward, and there's reverse and it's all happening right from this toggle. So inside the cockpit, very straightforward, key on, forward, step on the gas. Of course, the e-brake off. Now the e-brake is particularly critical in this car because you don't leave it in gear. In fact, we only have dirty engine oil uh, root beer here, no shift to engage or lock. So the e-brake is very important to stop the car from rolling away and it will roll away. So make sure to remember the brake every time. So that's pretty much all you have. Turn signals are here. You get an indicator there. This is all running off that low voltage side of that pack. This would be the voltage of that pack. You see it's about 15 volts right now. And this gauge is telling me the condition of the low voltage system. This gauge with the 161 or 163 is telling the condition of the high voltage. Transmission four and aft is here. This is uh, no heater blower because we don't have water to heat. So there's no heat in this car. This is just a placeholder. This is a, a cigarette lighter accessory port for your cell phone charger. And these wipers, you pull out one click for a wiper and that's it. This is side lights and headlights. I like to drive with these side lights on for marker lights. And that just helps you be more visible. So that's it. Those are the controls under the hood, except for one more. Right here, the key has to be on. Come on, baby. So we have a regular horn here and a, a vroom vroom horn with the button here. Okay, and then that multifunction is here out on the end. So that is your cockpit. Now let me show you this weather gear or sunshade as it may be in this case, because we don't have a top. 
So the top bow lives back here. And this bow, you want to be really careful as I've shown in other videos. Try to get it at an angle so that it can't scratch things when you lift it out. And that way you can do it with one person. But you could obviously scratch this trim and the paint on here. It has to do a 180 in order to hold the top or the bikini top. We put it in one hole and we're very careful here to make sure it doesn't hit the cockpit into the next hole. And that's how we start. And then the bikini top, we can unfurl away from the car because there are these metal buckles. And then that goes over like so. We can, let's try it this way. We can hook on these little snaps on the windshield. And then, thank you, Nick. The, the metal hooks here should be able to reach. There's one, Nick's got the other one. It should stretch. There we go. This lays on top like so. And then the, the front bar pivots forward, but this you can push up and that makes the bar go forward like so. And now it's a tad loose, so you come here open these little spring detents and then the bow goes up to take more tension and that gives you your sunshade. It pulls out some of the wrinkles like so. And that gives you sunshade, bikini top, lots of air through there. When you're opening the door, the latch is here on the inside. And you'll want to just be mindful not to push down on the back of the door. If you do, you can make these two connect and scratch the paint. So that's important to know about that. And then we also have a tunnel cover, which is here and pretty straightforward with the tunnel. The key thing about the tunnel is these two hooks right here, right where my fingers are. Those have to engage here and here on the same hooks where the top is. And then the tonneau stretches forward and engages one, two, three, and two more in the front and two on the other side, and you pull it taut that way. That's the tonneau. Come on back here. This is the 110 charger. You won't use that very often on this car because it's pretty slow relative to 220. But if you're at a friend's house and you run out of juice and you're sleeping overnight, for argument's sake, this can replenish the batteries reasonably well if you have enough time. If you have less time or if you have a 30 amp charger at home, you come back here and I'll jump in the other side to show you. And this 220 outlet, which is right behind here, somehow this flips open. Boy, I can't do this without my glasses anymore. There it is. So this has this little catch. It's been open for the last six months, so I've never actually seen this closed because we're always working on it. But this is how you open it. And then you have the little gun for the charger. You hold the button in, you push it in, you let go. You hear it click and this lights up and will tell you the voltage. Hi from Bug Eye Guys. This is a 30 amp line from a 220 charger. And this, well this is an electric Bug Eye that requires this. That is the first Bug Eye, production Bug Eye ever made, number 501 and 5L501. Just here from Australia. Just arrived today in Connecticut. So what a contrast we have the electric Bug Eye and 1958's version of how to power a frog eye. Quite a contrast. But anyway, for this little video, just want to show you how this is engaged. So we have our 220 port. We flip open the little cap. We take this gun. We're mindful of the cord so it doesn't scratch the rocker. Hold the button in. Press it in. Let go. We hear the contactor and the charger engage. 
and we see we have 163 volts and we should have a green light on the panel to the left and that tells us the juice is flowing and if we leave it here for 10-15 minutes it'll jump up to 164 and this is that if you come around this way this is our as I was saying earlier our biggest liability is we don't want it's fine now but we don't want this cord to be scratching this up if we can avoid it so when you're all done you come back you just push the button pull it out shut the flap and you're all charged up generally it takes six eight hours to fully charge with a 220 30 amp lead that's how you charge your froggy but this is all you need to know for high voltage charging this is your your trunk space with an extra 110 cord if you really needed one in an emergency to get plugged in the 220 line comes in here and plugs in and you can leave it there it will shut off automatically when it's full one more thing that's probably one of the more important things i can share this is probably the most vulnerable part of the car because the cord the fat cord for the 220 line will often pick up grit from the floor and as you drag it into the car to plug it in you'll end up basically chafing this rocker panel and so you might want to put a rag here or just be extra mindful it's a lot like you know being careful with the rubber fuel line at the gas station but that's the friction point for plugging it in here's your three-point seat belt that's in here retractable nice feature and here's the trickle charger that gets plugged into the front uh, for the low voltage battery as we discussed. And that, friends, is one fancy froggy electric bug eye sprite from Bug Eye Guys.